Hello everybody, <laughs> let me introduce David Fisher and his talk porting the OpenOffice.org website to the Apache CMS. Thank you. Um, well, we have a, a wonderful audience here. And um, so what I was going to talk about is uh, moving OpenOffice.org to the Apache CMS. Uh, first introduction. Uh, my name is David Fisher or Dave Fisher. I'm a senior director in corporate IT at CEB, and I'm an Apache member, and I belong to uh, several project management committees, which you can see here. Um, and basically, uh, openoffice.org uh, was a migration. Um, Migration is a typical uh, procedure that you encounter when you're moving from one system to another uh, for content and will often involve some kind of transformation of the content rather than just quickly copying it. Um, you, we did take the least uh, copying approach where you know, one of the affect things as little as possible, didn't want to change the existing content such as it was. It was somewhat outdated. So in, in June 2011 started my uh, beginnings with OpenOffice uh, when um, uh, Oracle donated OpenOffice.org to the Apache Software Foundation. It came to the incubator and there was a free sign up uh, of initial committers. I got flagged by someone I work with, an Apache POI uh, PMC that this was happening and it was very interesting and I thought it was really cool and I thought here are a whole bunch of people that are coming that aren't so experienced with Apache and it was a chance to get involved. So I got involved with the donation and started helping investigate all the different infrastructure that had to be ported and there's quite a lot and there was you know a lot of issues, a lot of people, a lot of things going on, a very active list. Um, and, you know, we did the various things. Uh, you know, there was many subdomains. There was a subdomain for every language. ITOpenOffice.org IT, is Italian. MO.OpenOffice.org was Mongolian OpenOffice. And it's just all different kinds of things, all different projects. All the projects had their own subdomains. And uh, all this was hosted on. Um, turned out to be it was hosted after discovery we found out it was hosted on Kanai which is an internal Oracle product and as you got down into the depths of the details it had been uh, ported from Calabra in February of 2011 and it was not a complete port they didn't catch all the areas there were mailing lists in different areas that were just sort of left on the side so they didn't do a great job. Um, so a uh, little bit about the, well first, the open office site is in our repository at this location. So when I give references uh, later on, they will be off of the trunk of the OO site. OO site. And um, we use the Apache CMS uh, at Apache. And it was, um, it's a nice little system. It's very compact, well done, has some nice facilities. But it was homegrown in Apache. And um, it's a basically a sort of around Markdown with Perl, but it can handle all kinds of other file formats. You just have to know how to set it up. Uh, the main com components that you really have to work on when building a site is you need to work on the View PM, which controls transformations and creation of content. Uh, the path.pm, which determines how to transform each particular file type as it goes through the processing change uh, chain. And then uh, you have templates to control your content and how it looks. And then, of course, you have the content. So these are all the different areas that are important. Uh, we started the open office site based on our podling website which was a copy from another podling and we fixed up and uh, just use that as a template and then um, I, we, 
I, I created with a little help from other people some scripting conversions to um, take the content and move it from its current, what, what was it, what's then current repository location in Kanai, which was a subversion repository, out of that and did some transformations on my local computer and uh, created it. So um, I'm going a bit quickly, I suppose, but the main thing was the conversion of the website. So there's a, a central uh, item for each of the hundreds plus projects that we identified. Uh, there was a script around this, but the key script was uh, first this Kanai to website script. And what that did was to export from the Kanai repository into a directory local, that's the web project. And then he went through and made sure that we had Unix light endings because I'm on a Mac. So I wanted to make sure all the line endings were straightened out and everything was copacetic with those file types. Then, well, the, the next step was, you know, there's various parts. The, the whole CMS has a build process. You build and you look at it. Locally, I was building and looking at it. And we did this in phases and did it across several of the um, different sites and made sure it looked good. Sometimes I, there was, it was necessary to do some CSS modifications and necessary, not necessary really to play with the JavaScript much. And just, I was just trying to get it to look halfway decent and take care of any problems. Uh, on top of that, uh, when we hit the point of understanding our domain name structure, there were several sets of said scripts that were run against it to uh, convert uh, domain names to our new form since we were going from the subproject.openoffice.org format into the www.openoffice.org slash subproject. So we did a lot of that. And um, sure. Yeah, at that stage, the initial export stage, did you run into any issues with um, like character set um, inconsistencies? You know, something isn't declared as UTF-8, but it's something else, or? Uh, there were some character inconsistencies, but they weren't too terrible. The main one was uh, Bangladesh. Oh, wow. And because that wasn't a standard scripting, and it came out kind of funny at first, and I think we re revisited that and got it looking decent, but you know, that took some effort. Uh, later on in the conversion, there was a real, there's a point in time where, uh, and I'll get to this in a few, in a few minutes, but there's a point in time where we realized we had to really take what was in the body tag out of the body tag and make sure that we kept that on the page. And because the, the body, body tag might, in some cases, actually have the character set indication for that page. So, you know, we had to, I had to look at templates and the wrapping. You know, when I looked at it, when Kanai's pages came out, they had all the navs and everything wrapped up, and it had, you know, the old fashioned, you know, five layers, I don't know, maybe not, it was four layers of tables to set it up right, you know, with just, you know, the kind of HTML that was produced 15 years ago that was, you know, not a frame set, but, the thing after frame sets. So, you know, we knew we, knew we had to rewrap the pages because they didn't really have the, the branding on them or, or anything, you know, for navigation. We weren't going to want them navigation the way it was. So, you know, it was all about going and figuring out what the format and the style of the page would be. Um, so here's, here's I, I mentioned before, the, um, the files. Uh, that you had to pay attention to. One of the key ones is deciding what to do with each particular file type. Now this is the, the path.pm that's current in the project. We started off with a much simpler one. Uh, if you, it would be just these items here. In other words, how to transform HTML pages. Either an HTM page or an HTML page. There was a mix and there's a mix in the site. And then we added MD text. 
and then I think Rob, you added this pass through, and then these were added for branding purposes, which we'll get to. But basically, this defines uh, a procedure uh, like single narrative or HTML page that gets run in the view.pm. And then it also defines what the template is out of the template directory. So I, I just I took a small sliver out of the view.pm. This is part of the HTML file uh, mechanism. So this is the you know what we ended up with. Uh, one of the things that we realized at a certain point in time is that we were making changes to the to the style and branding and hitting every causing every file to be republished, um, and that was. Uh, a very slow process and consumed a lot of info resources at the time. So um, they complained about our sledgehammer builds. And so we went to SSIs. So the first thing that's done is there's an SSI header file that's associated with any particular page that's a path-based derivation. So the first statement extracts, uh, finds that file. And then from that file, we can read out the arguments. It's an MD text file, and it, it provides a set of arguments at the top, which are then used in the, you know, for branding purposes and other purposes like the announcement text at the top of the page. Um, we also, you can see in this line, this is a kind of a key, extract content from the head. And inside the body tag, and then the body itself. And then those become arguments in this argument list. And we create breadcrumbs. And then we pass all that stuff into the template to process. So as I was saying, it was big. It's about 9 gigabytes of content is the number that I hear from Joe. And there's about 156,000 files in the CMS in the content tree. So here's just the banner uh, from our page, our current page the Engl in English. So we see we have announcements. We've got you know, the start of the breadcrumbs over here. We've got all of our top nav. We've got our, our branding here and a logo. So this is, this is from the HTML template. So we play a little trick to stick the doc type in. Um, we always make sure we have our regular CSS. Then if there, were, if there is information in that header that we extract, then we put it back in there so that we have that content. Otherwise, we insist on a title from the title of the, header, of the, pro, of the file. If it was an MD text file, it has a title at the top. We pull that in. Um, we um, so we go there's, if there's a, if there's CSS in there we pull that in uh, Google Analytics uh, this entourage script um, I think those are something that, that Rob added so we track things um, then the body we reinstate the body tag um, then we include our um, our branding um, and that's actually HTML. Uh, and pull that in. Then it's the top bar. So you see the top bar is also an SSI. Breadcrumbs are an SSI. Notice that these are separate divs. So if the top bar gets too wide, then the breadcrumbs go, end up below. Um, then we clear out the div. We have optional left and, left and right navs that can be added for a particular content, part of the content tree. And um, then there's a block for legacy and um, titles and content markdown. That's, and then um, there's a footer that we pull in through SSI. So it's just a nice, a nice template, has all the pieces we need. This took you know, a few iterations to get to. And we worked it through, but 
it was, it was good to have the example of the piling site, which we cribbed from another project. Um, and, you know, it, it took time, but it, end, it ends up being, you know, kind of straightforward. For the templates, this, the key item is the SSI MD text, which sets up these parameters, you know, for the basic uh, document type, the branding elements, the, which is the top of the footer, the top nav, and it, this sets the, the home for the, for the um, breadcrumbs. Now the brand has its own MD text, and this pulls in um, you know, the name of the project, taglines, what our current logo is. So we change logos. All we have to do is change these, that one line. Uh, the domain name, a div ID for the banner, for the design, then the announcement that we saw and where you want it to go and what the tooltip is. So we can do all kinds of promos very easily at the top and keep this fresh. So when we announce a new version, it goes right there. We call for volunteers and translation, it goes right there. Whatever we need to do. I think one of the debates we had was what color should that be? And I think we just settled, settled on blue. I think I had it kind of this reddish pink and people didn't like that so much, but you know, the blue keeps up the theme pretty well. I think we thought, I think initially thought that the announcement would be not all the time but it's turned into you know, a really nice feature. So one of the cool things, and this is, you know, okay, so the, the top nav again, you've got this whole, this is more classic markdown where you actually explain the links. So we have the whole link set up with the, with the tool tip and everything, the, where it needs to go and how it can be expanded. We've got, again, we've got the div ID, so if there's any reason to change it on a particular page, we can change it and change that style. So what do we do of another language? So this is uh, uh, Chinese from uh, Taiwan, the traditional. And it you know, would work well with anyone from that country, anyone who speaks that language. So how do we do that? Well, notice this is a template. So notice that now there is a, a, a language code. So there's a subdirectory underneath there. And you define, again, the SSI through the MD text. Notice it uses the, some of the standard stuff. But then it has its own brand. And it, and it has its own top nav. And the other stuff remains the same. For the, the brand, then they can go and now they can describe home differently, search differently, you know, the tagline, uh, still the same logo file. And the tooltip on the announcement and the announcement text themselves are different. Uh, the announcement URL that they choose is to download. So they, they, aren't, they aren't talking about Twitter on this page. They're just selling, telling their people where to go to download. Because this is uh, well, this is what I came up with at the time. So this, I, I, fi I figured it out. This is how I figured out how to use things. Now, what I'm thinking about, and this is, you know, we're getting to the end, but since there's so few of us, what I'm thinking about is how do we take Poodle and use Poodle in translation and start translating top nav branding and also key pages underneath the main site. So we translate them into MD text and turn them into, you know, turn them into an actual something that someone can maintain and we get the same message across through more and more native speakers. Mm-hmm. 
Joe announced something, or I think it was on it was on General Incubator last weekend. They actually have expanded uh, the path.pm file to have a bunch of attributes. So you could have a bunch of attributes. So you could have, you know, which ones are translated. And then if you had which ones are translated, and then that referred to a file. And if that file didn't have the tra string translated, right, then you would use the inherited one. So that's why I'm thinking that that's probably the mode where you could, you'd want to refer to your translation file there. And then in the view PM, in the view PM, you'd have a procedure that would, this procedure would do a call to something that would handle that instead of, you know, in addition to the SSI header file or to replace the SSI header file. And then that moves everything to one spot. Now the question is, does changing path.pm cause a build of every page? I have to talk with Joe about that because, you know, as he looked, as I looked it through the SVN comments and preparing for this, often we were triggering full builds by touching view.pm and path.pm. So, you know, I think we have to be careful what approach we use. But I think that what's really cool is that this shows that if you just hack a little bit of Perl, and I never really played with Perl before I did this, you know, you can get quite a bit of unique value out of things. And, you know, you, with, with what's in, um, you know, view.pm, you, you can change, the, change how things work. You can learn. You know, you can do interesting things. And, you can, you, of course, you can study how www.apache.org is made and look at that as well. And, um, you know, there's, there's ways that they have feeds in there, like, you know, on the main page where they have the new, where they change the, the projects that are featured. You could change different features. You could rotate through a set of features that you want to show and lead at the top. There's, you know, a number of different things that can be done. Um, you know, you can come up, we could have a, a .po file, you know, whatever .po, and that could then be translated. You know, any file, we could make up file types and translations. That's a beautiful bit about computer science, I think. Half the problems can be solved by an extra level of interaction. The other half can be solved by increasing the level of interaction. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends. You know, you just don't want to get to have too many layers of indirect. The double indirection can get you in trouble. You know, it's going to be hard to get a handle on it. Oh, no one. No one chuckled at the. <laughs> so as I said, you know, Joe, Joe, Joe Schaefer is a, a key person in the Apache infrastructure who created the CMS, and he responded to the sledgehammer issue by you know. By doing some hard work and improvements at that time, he um, made it so every user, including anonymous users, end up with their own workspace. Because um, you know, with nine gigabytes, you know, it's that's a lot to have loaded and, and et cetera. He made it multi-threaded so that it processes on eight threads through the content. Um, he used ZFS tricks to to manage the disk space and the workspace areas. So, you know, that made it you know much faster. I think it went from, you know, basically taking you know an hour or so to build and delaying everyone else to something that takes, you know, in the matter of a few minutes to, to build all that. So that was really impressive on his part. Now we get to sort of what's next about the site. So maybe you have um, an insight into. When I update the statistics for OpenOffice, um, it's in the stats directory. There's a CSV file that I upload. I have to update it, it extensions CSV. Whenever I touch that file, it seems to do just an enormously long rebuild on the system. And I know CSV is not a extension that you had listed in um, whatever it was the path.pm order. Yeah. You know what, what? What would be the behavior if you touch a file? And I, it's not 
so it, would, it shouldn't be included in any templating because it's, oh, it's I think a data we have file, to it seems exclude to be... it. Yeah, so you need to you need to oh, yeah. put a, a, a sort of a null. Because it seems to be slower than if I had modified an HTML file. Yeah, because there's a path for the HTML file. Okay. See. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why. So you yeah. just probably need to add a QR exclamation point slash dot CSV dollar sign exclamation point and tell it to pass through. Okay. Glad I cared. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the, you know, uh, Jan gave a, has hinted about a lot of stuff with Genlang and he talked about Genlang and stuff. I just think that and early on, there was a suggestion from, from Daniel of Infra that we, you know, have .en versions of each page in front and .de and stuff like that and try to do the standard things. Oh, it's got a, that's got a arm's length. It's better to have separate directories. You agree? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, we could, we could in the Apache front end, um, you know, redirect according to, if we knew that certain languages were good, we could redirect people to their native language homepage based on their accept lang um, parameters on their browser. Oh, so, 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 so if like we just hit slash, and then we could redirect on slash based on accept lang and which languages we're willing to accept yes. at that level, maybe that level, or maybe you know just in the an HTTP D comp file at the top level could so do that. Find a way to do that without making most of the pages invisible to the people who are Yeah, yeah. We don't want to confuse Google exactly because that's our main that drives traffic. Well, what kind of hits do we get to slash versus index.html? Uh, I'd, I'd have to check. Um, I think our top one is slash, second one is download. Okay. And the Google, yeah, Google the won't. <laughs> yeah, and we already have a fairly large section in the in the configuration. Yes. Well, we had to redirect all the different. You know, we have the different all the services, and and on top of that, all the different project and and language project files. So. Google also has kind of a. If we do this, we want to maybe adopt some convention for how you tag. Two pages that are identical, except they're just translations the same. Yeah. So they can kind of correlate them, know which one's maybe the canonical English version versus the translation. So mm -hmm. even if they search for something, there's something there, but they also have some sort of URL that you specify. Here's the English version on the same page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then they can put a drop down that where some sites have a flag or whatever where you can switch to the other language based on which ones are available in that language. I mean, that's something, if, if, we, if we were to have, you know, a handful of pages that were translated, I mean, where would we start? I mean, which well, ones? What, what I have in the XX directory? I haven't. Yeah, think about it. It's been a discussion um, we had at the, um, the localization mail. Slash XX. What I've done is I've 
abstracted, but I consider it to be kind of the 30 most, just two X's. Oh. Who knows what you find at the three? <laughs> okay. And, and what it is, is this, I, I've made everything so there isn't a separate download directory. Everything's flat and out. All the images and resources are all brought. So, so this XX directory can be copied to any Google account. Ah. And what, well, we've done a couple of them. Oh, the Latin version is. That that one's just a literal translation of those thirty pages. There we go. Well, that that was the core. So it was the core. So what it was is the product download support page, and then stuff on the left that we usually have the Y and the. Did you do this? This is Serbian with a Latin alt, but no, it's not. Find them on Facebook. Try TR. I think that was another one. The Turkish one did that. Okay. That's really good. And what I do is I have up on one of the wiki pages. I, what I do is I take the XX directory, I zip it up, give it to the translator, they send it back, and I check it in. And um, pretty much easy to translate, except for that download page where there's some interaction between the translation strings and um, JavaScript. And we have translation yeah. strings that are JavaScript. Yeah. Uh huh. Was that on the Taiwan or the I mainland? Was, yeah, I think it was the T H um, C M. Yeah, that would be the mainland. See that that was the thing. One of the things that um, one of the one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that if a, if a native language site had you know a uniqueness to it that we just didn't override it in case there was still a community there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like a par a paragraph description going someplace. So you just so it's a six paragraph page, you provide each each paragraph is a string, right? Yeah, for the nice yurts. Yeah, that's the thing I think. It allows each language group to really kind of express their own you know, identity, but I, I think we're better off having kind of that unified brand message that mm -hmm. they have a similar. I, w I was talking to Shane this morning. I was re recalling to, for him the incident of the guy making the sarcastic remark about, well, what about Apache? You know, the Apache people have a language as they're, you know, because they call it like Mongolian open office. Well, it would have to be what Apache open office for Mongolian. So it would be Apache open office for Apache. Actually, I think the language has a different name, but. Yeah, I think it would be cool to get some of the, like, get a Hawaiian translation. Yeah, maybe. Well, that's true. Actually, I might have a contact for that. I've only been in Hawaii once, but I heard that they spoke it much more than I thought. Yeah, a lot of them don't want them to speak the pigeon so much, and and Hawaiian, yeah. Well, I, I'm not, currently I don't have a lot of time, but I'm willing to help support this part of the interac interaction. I don't, 
I can't build the project and then oversee it, but you know, I think it's a good idea. I can I can work on the code to put. We we'd, we'd have to set it up and see. You know how the why page one of the why pages might be interesting for that because that's already done to MD text right. Uh, was that uh, was it Ariel that did that work? So this was all converted away from. I, I spent a I spent a little bit of effort trying to make these look halfway decent because the they were really customized. Yeah. Exactly. So we probably need a YY to, to, to set it up. And then once we get that set up, then we could see about a, a PO because the, the, the uh, workflow that you're setting up with the PO files would definitely, you know, call out things, call out issues of translation as we, as we refine our policy on the English site and we move to the other sites. Uh huh. And because the extractor can't see whether it's an HTML tag or whether something well, can, needs to be translated. Can the extractor look in a look into a, a div tag and get a so the extractor can look into a div tag and we can give it an ID in the div you tag. Can use an ID or, or use, a, use an extra tag name name translate or something. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can make all kinds of tricks like that. That's very oh, yeah. Or, or, or the template itself. We could have a template for that page, and we could just have a replacement at that location. Do we need to worry about emphasis? Like a, a word that might need to be in bold or underlined? No. You can have that, in the string. that can be in the string. Yeah. So you don't mind like a can, you don't mind like I a B tag. MD text as it is. Okay, MD tags. Okay. So it'd be better to mark down, go to markdown, and then take the markdown into the file. Yes. That that would be ideal. Okay. And then, and then for download for pages like download and the main page that have special kinds of buttons that aren't for those we would need to figure out I think we should figure out how to make those work with markdown rather than having these guys have to maintain complex HTML we ought to, to make that a template and plug it in yeah yeah, we have to work out that translation. So there's there's really it's kind of kind of there's the two problems of formatting, you know, one where it's in HTML and it matters, and then there's the one where it's just text and we're gonna we're gonna mark it up, mark it down, yeah. and then there's um, making sure the PO files. In one case, it's a simple transformation. 
In the other case, it's, it's more or less uh, a, a little more complicated transformation, but maybe not so much. And if we can take advantage of the new stuff that Joe has in the path.pm, then we can sort of handle that configuration in some way so that it knows where to find those resources. Mm -hmm. the, see, that, that's where what Joe came up with, announced with the, with the front means that we can actually specify the languages we have and the PO files we have right there in that path. And then, and then in the view.pm, we have that information and we can just move forward with it however we need to according to whatever directory we're in. We could even override pages that exist in HTML and ignore them. Perhaps. Do we have PHP now on the front ends? Mod no, PHP? But it's, there. it's there? Don't tell Alexandro. Nope. I hope he's not listening. Could, we, we, what, what we're trying, what, I think what there were people initially who wanted to do CR. Crowd, crowd operations on the site to do registration and stuff like that and talk about that kind of thing and we didn't really want to do that and we were told no we don't want to do that on the site but very limited targeted PHP things yeah I could see that it has to yeah exactly exactly it, we're, we're serving static pages essentially yes, yes. That is the key. OK. Well, have we, have we covered any more questions? No. Nope. OK. Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs>